Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to learn about using the Desmos graphing calculator to do art. Um, this is a project I like to do around the holidays and so I just want to make sure that uh, I kind of have a video here that explains some of the basics. It's also a, very, uh, a great thing to kind of do if you're bored and you're, you're very creative and whatnot and you want to you know, play on the coordinate plane if you will. Alright, anyways, when it comes to making uh, some sort of art on Desmos, the main tool you're going to want to use here is this polygon tab, uh, or the, the idea of polygons. So a polygon is just a shape, and so uh, what Desmos will do is you list in some points, and then it will make that shape for you. Now a couple of things. I've noticed bro, how students won't always spell polygon correctly, and when that happens, uh, you, can't, you won't get the function. Now I want to show you, as you're typing it in, polygon, it swaps from going in italicized text to more normal upright text. That's how you know you've done it right. And so some of the mistakes I see, and I mean that happens where you maybe just kind of need to swap a couple of letters, it, it's not upright anymore, it's still italicized. So it's not the function polygon, so polygon. Now there's a lot of sort of, you got a, a learning curve for how to work with it. You need to use a lot of parentheses, and you got to be mindful of what order you're putting them in. So I'm just going to make a real quick shape here. So I'm now going to make another set of parentheses, and I'm going to list a point, and I'm going to start at let's go with negative two, comma two, and then I want to think where is this going to go? Because right now negative two, two is right here. Maybe I'm going to go with some sort of trapezoid figure. So I'm going to go up to there, and then down to there, down, and then there. That kind of just this is my mouse here. All right, so what that means is I want to go with, I want to put a comma in here, my next point, each point separated by a comma, more parentheses, two, comma, three. Okay, good, good. Now I'm going to put another comma, parentheses, new point, two, comma, negative three. Looking good so far. And then I'm not going to put in parentheses or a comma, and my polygon disappear. We've broken the function. It's not what we want it to be, and it's not filling in the way I wanted it. So that's where it's super important to make sure you have a comma between all of these. Common mistake I see, people accidentally put periods, thinking they type to put the comma button. Sometimes those are really close to each other, so you know it's a common mistake. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you have commas, and then there we go. We now have a shape here. All right? So uh, you can make a bunch of polygons. And if you want to, you can get like you know very detailed, like where all the points are, so you can make something very specific, like a pumpkin, uh, put a lot of points around there. Um, and then you can also use this just for a line. So you know if they all kind of line up nicely, uh, you, you'll get a line out of this. All right. Now a couple other things. Go here. We can play with the color. So pre or so if we do this, it disappears. But if we press and hold it, we now have all these options for colors. These won't be there. I'll show you how to get these a little bit later. All right. Um, but a couple of things here. So if I don't want to fill it and I just want the lines, I can do this and now I have the lines. I can make it a blue shape. I can make it a purple shape. Let's go with like a red shape and let's fill it in. Um, if you want to adjust the, uh, uh, the size of the lines or something like that, we can put this in and see what that ends up doing. Let's see. So that's the fill. Uh, doesn't seem to do too much. But if you want to make the lines a little bit bigger, we can do that. And so we can increase that. Oh, there we go. The fill. This is what I'm looking for. Um, point four. If I go to point nine, it's going to be less transparent. If I go to one, it's a percentage. It is a uh, hundred percent filled in. If I make it point one, it's ten percent filled in. You can kind of see there's a little bit of shading there, but point five, point four is, is kind of a good spot to have it kind of lightly colored in. All right. Now, pro tip. What you can do is use this gear here to copy and paste this. And so now you have it again. And what you can now do is maybe quickly change some of the points. So maybe now I'm gonna go here and I'll make this negative four, negative four. And I really quickly kind of, you know, made a similar shape, but I moved it just a teeny tiny bit. So that's an option that you have. Circles are a little more complicated. They're beyond middle school math, but here's the equation needed for them. And so again, what I'm going to recommend is that you use the gear to kind of copy and paste and move them as you need to. Right now, I have this here. If you want the circle to pop up, you got to put it here. The hard part is that if you want to move it, you got to do the opposite in the parentheses. So let's say I want to put it 
right there at 2 comma 6. Well, for the x, I'm going to go minus 2, and I'm going to go minus 6 in the y, and it moved it up to that point right up there. And that's where the center of the circle is going to be. If I want to make my circle larger, I can change this number, and it will make it incrementally larger or smaller. So if I want to make it smaller, I could go like, you know, 0.25, something like that. So you can play around with that. If I want it colored in, I need to change this to being less than and equal to, and then it'll be colored in. And then I can do, you know, the same thing I was doing with the polygons, press and hold, can change the colors, the width of the line, all that fun stuff. Now, speaking of colors, normally the colors you're going to get are, is this top row right here. If you want something a little more custom, I have a little spot for you in the folder right here. So go to colors. You're creating a new function that the calculator will kind of play around with here. And so these are built in here. HSV, that is a color function. And what you can then do is you can move these pieces around and it will help you kind of create whatever color you want. And then you can go to your polygon and you can change the color and it's just right there. Now, if you need multiple custom colors, oh, there's another way to do this. You can do it with RGB. Same thing, move this around and it will change your colors a little bit. Um, and so the hard part is you have to really kind of play around with it to get the color you want. And it's, unless you're really familiar with what these letters represent, it might be kind of difficult to pinpoint an exact color, but you can play around with it and find it. Now, if you want to make more custom colors, again, go to the gear, you gotta copy this, but now you need to make this be two, two, and two, and then we gotta change this guy to being two. It's actually, we've got to change this one to be three because I already have a variable for C2. Click add all. And now, again, I can copy or I can play around with this and change it as I see fit. And if we go to my coat, like a polygon, we'll now see all three of these colors. And so these three colors are going to correspond to C3, C2, and C1. And so uh, that, that's how you can make some custom colors. Outside of that, the creativity is uh, unlimited, I think. If you have any other questions about how to do something, feel free to let me know, and I'm more than happy to help. But sort of these are the basics that are needed to be able to make some sort of really cool stuff uh, on the graphing calculator and to do a, a Desmos art project. So good luck with what you're working on.